So I want to make a game using AI art assets. This week, we're going to get to the point where we have a character model that we can control that is completely made out of AI assets. And so we're going to go over the process of getting to that point. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So to start off with, we have to focus a lot on the image processing aspect because we are taking these images from stable diffusion. But there's two straightforward ways of using stable diffusion. You can either they have this one website that you can go to and you can just kind of put in your prompt and it'll spit out an image and it's really, really good for quick turnarounds. Uh, but the thing is, is that it oftentimes has a really large queue and it has limited customizability. Uh, there's also another really easy way of using it, which is using a Google Colab book. And it has a very straightforward, just kind of running through these prompts that you have to just kind of execute on. But in particular, we're going to be doing a bunch of concept art. And so concept art has historically been done on, in very wide images and stable diffusion will actually expect the image to be a wide aspect ratio. So you should really make it so that it's a wide image for what we're about to be doing. And that'll give it a lot more room to work with kind of having different characters in different rotations. Uh, okay. So useful keywords that I found were sets of things. So that oftentimes makes it so that the algorithm produces multiple instances of something in the exact same style. And so that means that you can have, uh, you can kind of group those things together and that's very useful. Uh, the other thing is saying that it's concept art oftentimes brings out a certain style as well. And so you can kind of start playing around with these different things and kind of combining words together. And then once you get onto a good uh, set of keywords, oftentimes if you just change one word, that'll drastically change the image, but it'll still stay within the same style style, or at least it'll kind of oscillate around the same style. So you can end up creating very similar pieces and that can give your game kind of a more consistent look to it. And so like, if we look at some of these images, if you compare them side by side, you'll notice that some of them have kind of the exact same positions and the exact same um, orientations. And so it's just changing out some of the style aspects. And that makes it a lot easier to work with digitally because you can kind of set up a process where you have all of these images and then you're kind of like using a similar process on all of them. So once we have a nice set of concept art, what we're going to be moving towards is image processing. So to start off with, we need to remove the entire background. So uh, just kind of getting it into either GIMP or Photoshop and just clearing out that background. Also need to pick out a front and back. So if we just have a one-sided image, that ends up meaning that it'll be a little bit disorienting when the person is moving around. It's not the biggest deal, but if there's a very clear front and back, you might want to make like a sandwich later so that you have the two different sides of that character. Once we have the character, characters cut out, we can move them into Blender. And so in Blender, the process is so we can start by using the displacement tool. So we can displace the image texture up and then take those vertices and highlight them in the editor and delete them and then return the displacement back to normal. And that should do a really good job of cutting out all of the background. Um, there's gonna be some extra cuts that we need to make. So we'll use the knife tool to do some more precision cutting and deleting of faces. And then once we have it in a reasonable shape, we have to move it into T-Pose. So is, if you've done this in Photoshop, you don't need to do this now, but since, since we didn't get around to it, we're going to be doing that at this moment. So we'll be moving it into T-Pose. And so you can use the geometry manipulation to kind of smooth that out. And once you have it in T-Pose, you can overlay the T-Pose with the T-Pose of the animations. The animations we're getting from Mixamo. So you basically go to this website, you download the animations. You can also use other animations from other places, but we're going to be using these ones. Then you put those onto the model. You do auto weight. Here is a part where you can get a little bit more detailed and you can start painting out weight. But I think for the kind of, we're going to try and go low effort and not do weight painting today and see how it turns out. So we're just going to ignore the weight painting. But that's an important step if you're not familiar with this workflow. The next step is going to be making sure that all of the animations are bundled to the image in the correct way. So we're going to be renaming all of them and adding them as actions. And one of the really helpful tools here is the outline uh, module. So that can kind of allow you to tell what's actually being transcribed into the file. And so if there's any extra animations or if there's any mixing missing animations, it's a really easy to tell here. Some of the other tooling, it can get a little bit confusing over whether an animation is attached or not. In particular, the NL, NLA, um, the nonlinear uh, um, animation tool sometimes gives you the wrong idea of what is happening. So I found just sticking away from that for this particular part is helpful. Um, so once you have all the animations added, you can start deleting all the extra armatures that you probably got when you were importing these. And that'll leave you with just one armature and all the actions attached to it. And then you can export this as a GLB file. And so that's the more compressed version. And so at this point, my model was about two or three megabytes, which is a really small 3D model for like the quality that we're getting. So we've pretty much put together the entire model aspect. And now we just have to do some of the more program oriented stuff. 
I just wanted to do a quick comparison of my concept art versus the AI's concept art. <laughs> the other thing to rem remind yourself of is the resolution difference. So mine has about eight times the resolution, like the number of pixels as the AI. <laughs> so not only is it worse, I am using pixels a lot less efficiently, let's just say. We're going to be using a very similar framework that we did for the kind of World War II fighter jet game where we have kind of the states and the player controllers and all that stuff. Uh, so I don't want to go over all of the things in detail, but the things that are prevalent for today are going to be the kind of finite state machine and the animation loop and then the controller as well. So we're going to be focusing a lot on that part of the code. And then the other parts of the code, I wanted to continue on in a follow up where we're going to be looking more at creating the environment in the rest of the game. So we're going to be creating finite state machines. And so finite state machines are an idea to simplify animation. And so basically they are the concept that you can have certain states that are separable. So like things like running and walking or jumping and falling. And those states can only be traveled to from specific other states. So you end up with these kind of uh, graph like images where you have kind of these flow chart like images where you have uh, directions that different states can go to and they can only go to those states and they can't go to all the other states. And this is kind of really necessary for grading objects that seem real because you can't just otherwise things just start looking like they are switching between things too quickly. Like you can't have someone go from a uh, jumping to walking without some sort of intermediary step. So in the state file, we're basically just defining how it's transitioning and then which states it can transition to and the conditions for transitioning to those states. And so we are just going to be hooking up a bunch of different conditions for those transitions. And then we have to do some extra stuff too with making sure all of the animations kind of sync up appropriately. And we also had to do some calculations for the actual game engine and how the animations are in comparison to how we're moving the model. So those things have to be scaled appropriately or you end up with kind of moonwalking or other kind of weird aspects. So um, that's one of the reasons why we didn't include rotation quite yet is it's a little bit, the math is um, a little bit more involved once you have strafing already included. You have to do some extra geometry stuff and like it's not too bad, but it's just something that we're going to avoid for now. We also want to focus on the player controller. And so the main things that we have to change with that are going to be updating our finite state machines and then also making sure that all of the physics makes sense. So the rotations and all of that. Um, and that is also where we are going to be moving the camera or moving the character towards the camera. So we're going to be using some kind of cross product and some nifty stuff with um, acceleration towards the direction of the camera to get that working. Um, yeah, it's actually kind of a neat little like math problem that you have going on there where you like take the direction that your object is facing and take the intersection of your camera with the plane and then you're finding the cross product between those two and that's giving you a positive or negative rotation and then you're using that rotation to uh, pivot the model towards that point and as you get closer to the point the cross product goes down because if you have two parallel points the cross section is zero and if you have them yeah you were basically just using that really neat property from cross sections that people oftentimes forget about or I mean cross product uh, that people oftentimes don't use but yeah and that's basically all of it thanks and have a good day